you say imagine who you could be and then aim single-mindedly at that mm-hmm. um I encounter these young people who appear to know who they could be or they, they've imagined who they could be, but for whatever reason, they seem to choose the certain misery of their current situation, the job that's sucking their soul out or that relationship um, over the uncertainty they'll encounter as they go on the adventure of their life. So what would I say to these young people who always say to me, Steve, I, I want to do this, but you can see them stifled by fear because it's like... Yeah, well, it's like make a plan, man. It's So when I was doing my clinical work, which I I did a lot of career work with my clients, both at a beginner level, I would say, like really a beginner level with people who had no employment whatsoever, no history of employment, who were undereducated and who lacked every skill you could possibly imagine. So these were people who were really in dire straits, up to people who were operating at the top of their profession, but who could still strategize forward. And so, for example, let's say you're at a dead end in your job, Okay, so I don't find my work meaningful. All right, so that's a problem statement. It's like, well, why not? I find the work I do repetitive and boring and without spirit. I have a bad relationship or a neutral relationship with my boss who doesn't know who I am. Um, I have problems with coworkers. All of that needs to be differentiated, right, and analyzed in detail. So we might say, for example, let's say you believe that you're undervalued at work, and maybe you are. What you need to do is you have something to say, and we would have to figure out what it is that you have to say. But it would be some variant of, I'm bringing more value to the table than I'm being compensated for, and that's demoralizing me. And it's also not good for you, you being my boss, because if I'm actually more valuable than is being recognized, then the fact that you're not valuing me properly means that I will become demoralized, I won't work properly, and you won't get the best out of me. So it's bad for both of us. And if your boss is in principle not amenable to such a discussion, then what you should seriously consider doing is finding another job. Okay, so let's say we're gonna set you up for this. Okay, this isn't like next week's enterprise, man. This is your life. So the first thing I would ask is, well, do you have your resume or CV in order? Well, I haven't typed it up for three years. Well, what do you think about bringing it up? Well, I'm pretty nervous about that because there's some holes in it. And, you know, I didn't do so well in college and I'm kind of embarrassed about my resume. It's like, okay, bring it in. Let's go through it. Let's, let's, let's at least update it. Let's look where the holes are. Let's look at where the inadequacies are as far as you're concerned, right? This isn't my judgment, it's your judgment. Let's walk through those judgments and see if they're warranted because maybe you're just too guilty and ashamed and self-conscious and anxious and you're not, you're looking at your resume more critically than someone else would. And maybe there's some holes that you need to rectify. You were two courses away from your BA and you dropped out or something like that. Well, maybe we need six months to address that. And at least even if you can't be fully educated, you could be taking some courses online. And so when you went to a new job interview and they said, what about this hole? You'd say, well, I, I came to terms with that six months ago and in an effort to rectify it, I'm taking the following courses and here's my plan for completion. That's a really good answer. And anyone with any sense who's interviewing will accept that as an indication that although you're not perfect and who is, that you have a good plan and that you've thought it through. Like that's the kind of answer that in all likelihood will cement your candidacy for the position. Okay, so now you're gonna go to your boss. Well, you have to have your CV and your resume in order, and you have to be able to stand on it solidly, and which at least means that you're prepared to address the inadequacies in a credible, realistic, believable, and truthful manner. All right, now what you do is apply for like 10 jobs. You don't have to take them, but maybe you have to go to an interview or two or three or four, and maybe there's a bunch of opportunities out there for you that you didn't even know about. And maybe someone offers you a job. And so now now you can go to your boss and say, here's the situation I'm in here at work. Um, Here's my evaluation of the problems in relationship to me. Here's what I could do for you if you gave me a 40% raise and the opportunity to progress, but I'd like to see a plan for that. And um, I've been looking for other opportunities before conducting this discussion, and I have some. 
Well, then, if your boss treats you with contempt at that point and doesn't listen, then perhaps he or she is a little more narcissistic than might be optimal, and it's time to find a new job. But this isn't something you do trivially. And so when you're doubtful, say you're trapped, you ask yourself, well, why am I trapped? And that's a hard question, right? Because some of it's your own inadequacy, a lot of it. And all of the part of it that you can deal with is your own inadequacy. So even if it's unfair, you know, even if you're hemmed in for any number of reasons, inappropriate, like ethnically predicated oppression, let's say, or maybe you live, at, you're in a, a workplace that really is sexist in some fundamental sense. Well, that's not good. It's not just, it's not fair, it's, it's not meritorious, all of those things. Man, maybe you shouldn't be there. But what you can do to begin with is every bloody thing you possibly can do to put yourself in the most virtuous and powerful negotiating position possible. And you have to think like a snake in some sense to do that. You got to get the details right. You have to be prepared to bite and, and you have to have your eyes on the prize, so to speak. And people aren't taught this sort of thing ever, really. They're not taught how to negotiate. They're not taught how to goal set. They're not taught how to conceptualize appropriate success in some broad sense. In some sense, that's what the humanities are supposed to teach people. So...